Hello and welcome back to Fin Creek. You may have guessed what the video is about from the title. Most of you may have applied for a credit card or an auto loan in your life. And depending on your credit profile, you either got approved or declined. Today, we will discuss how your credit scoring works and what the best practices are and what most people generally get wrong about it. Many of you may have witnessed your credit score at some point and many of you might be actively monitoring it as well. Generally, when you check your credit score, it can be anywhere between 300 and 850. There are mainly three national bureaus which report your credit score, which are Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. When you make an application for any credit product like a personal loan, a credit card, auto loan or a mortgage, the lender refers to one or multiple of these bureaus to check your credit and depending on how good or bad it is, you would either get approved or declined. Now you would have also heard a score of over 720 is considered good. Some may even go as low as 680. This as a rule of thumb is correct. But a person who has one credit card in total which is reporting on their credit report can have a score of over 700, while a person who has five credit cards, two auto loans, one personal loan and a mortgage can have the same score. Would these two individuals be the same in the eyes of a lender? Of course not. So let's dissect the credit scoring technique. There are mainly two scoring agencies called FICO and Vantage. They both have their own method that they use to score the credit, but the scores tend to be in the same range as the credit details would still be the same. The major difference is that FICO does bureau specific scoring. That is, they have different methods of calculating scores for each bureau. While Vantage does a tri-bureau scoring, that is the scoring method is similar for each bureau. Both of them keep updating the scoring technique and the software and have released multiple versions over time. There are mainly five factors that are taken into consideration when determining the scores. Those are payment history. It measures the timeliness of your payments and accounts for about 40% of the weighted score. Then you have the total utilization. This is the ratio of the balance and the total credit limit and accounts for about 30% of the weightage. This is generally calculated on revolving lines. Then you have the credit history. This is the average length of time that an account has been open or just the length of time for the oldest account and accounts for about 15% of the weight. Then you have credit mix. This represents the types of accounts on your credit like auto loan, revolving credit card, etc. And this accounts for about 10% of the weight. And finally, you have new credit. This comes in the form of new trade lines that have been opened and new inquiries that are reporting and has about 5% of the total weight. Now the weights may differ depending on the version and the agency that is being used. But if you noticed, a total of 85% of the weight is given to payment history, total utilization and credit history. Assume that you only have one credit card with a limit of say $5,000 and is reporting a balance of $1,000. Then your utilization would be 20%. And if you have zero late payments and the account has been opened for say five years, then 85% of the weight would be positive. Since this is the only account, there would be no new credit inquiries either. So 5% of that weight is positive as well. That means just by managing one credit card well, you would have done 90% of your job in maintaining a good credit score. Even though you may lose points on credit mix factor, but that only accounts for 10% of the scoring weight. Now this may come down to 80% depending on the scoring technique, but still a major portion of the credit score is handled by these factors. Now this is where many people get it wrong. People often worry about their scores going down by 50 points, 10 points or even 5 points. But that's not something to be worried about. Because the lenders wouldn't look at it like that. What you need to be worried about is the reason for the score drop. If 40% of the weight is given to payment history, that means if you don't do anything other than not miss a payment, you would have scored positively on 40% of the weighted score. On the other hand, if you miss a payment or any account goes into collection, then that account would stay on the report forever and that can impact your score for a longer period. So if the scores drop because of this reason, then you ought to be a little worried as it would take longer than usual to rebuild your credit. 
But I also mentioned that credit utilization accounts for 30% of the weightage in credit scoring. So if you maxed out your credit card, then the score would obviously drop, but then would also go back up as you pay it off. This is the factor that an individual is most in control of. Also, if you want to build your credit, it is recommended that you use your credit card and pay it off. And repeat. And when required, apply for different credit lines like an auto loan or a personal loan to add to your credit mix points as well. And over time, you would see your credit profile getting stronger and stronger. And if the balance on credit cards is too high with a high interest rate, then a debt consolidation loan can also help as it would bring down the interest rate and your monthly payments and also help in increasing the scores. Seems confusing, right? The balance stayed the same, yet the scores may increase as the balances would be transferred to a personal loan from a revolving credit card and utilization is majorly calculated on revolving lines. So your utilization becomes lower and your personal loan adds to your credit mix points, but decreases the new credit points. But do keep in mind that people often fall in this false sense of security that their credit cards have high limits and tend to use more and more, causing the balances to shoot up further. And it is a very common misunderstanding that increase hurt your credit score. As I explained earlier, it only accounts for about 5% of the weight. So obviously it doesn't impact the scores as much. However, too many recent inquiries, which is within the last six months to one year, can also flag your account as it signifies too much of recent activity and puts your account in riskier borrower list for the lender and may cause declines in certain applications. So to summarize the key points, don't worry about the score drop. Just keep using and paying on time. Your overall credit profile would get better along with the scores generally and overall utilization of below 30% is recommended. Second, don't sweat too much about the increase either as they won't hurt your scores, but it does have a temporary effect on how the lenders may look at your profile. And finally, and most importantly, try to avoid a late payment or an account going into collection as that can have a long-term impact. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye.